Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. In this class, I am going to explain you about carbenes. Carbenes are very important reactive intermediates in synthetic organic chemistry. What are carbenes? Carbenes are neutral, highly reactive and divalent derivatives of carbon with only 6 electrons in their valence shell. The general representation of these carbenes is the carbon which is divalent and has 6 electrons in it. So generally an atom should obey the octet rule. So here this carbon atom is having 6 electrons only. So that is the reason these carbenes are neutral electrophiles. These carbenes are related to carbanions through the alpha elimination reaction. For example, if you take trihalomethane, this trihalomethane treat with the alcoholic KOH under thermal condition which gives you carbanion and the loss of halide. gives you a divalent carbon species which is called carbene. Carbenes can also be considered as conjugate base of carbocations. For example, if we have a carbocation which is electron deficient species and also important reactive intermediate, once it lost its proton from here which produces carbene. So here these carbenes are considered as conjugate base of carbocations and in this case the alpha elimination alpha elimination reaction which produces carbenes which are important reactive intermediates in synthetic organic chemistry. The simplest carbene so the simplest carbene is carbon which is bonded with the two hydrogens and has two electrons so which is also known as methylene so this is the simplest carbene and the substituted carbenes are simply named as substituted derivative of carbenes for example if you have substituted carbenes for example in this methylene one of the proton or one of the hydrogen replaces with the phenyl group then it can call as phenyl carbene phenyl carbene suppose if two hydrogens are replaced with the two alkyl groups then it is called as dialkyl carbene suppose the two hydrogens are replaced with the chlorines then it is called as dichlorocarbene and another example is bromo chlorocarbene so the simplest carbene is methylene and there are substituted substituted derivatives of carbenes you can have and the exceptions to this are carbenes in which the divalent carbon is part of the ring or is it or is doubly bonded for example Suppose if you have a cyclohexane and one of the carbon is divalent and contains 6 electrons so we can use a suffix for this is illidin. Okay, this suffix you can add to this derivative that is cyclohexyl 
idin cyclohexyl idin is one of the carbene and if we have this carbene connected to double bond then it is called vinyl lidin vinyl lidin so that means we have to use a suffix lidin lidin so if you have cyclohexyl group then it is cyclohexyl lidin if you have connected to double bond doubly bonded then it is vinyl lidin vinyl lidin so these are the carbenes generally occurs in synthetic organic chemistry and there are other carbenes we have this is already we have discussed it is methylene and this is acyl carbene which is stable and this is dichloromethane dichloromethane or dichloromethylene carbon and this is vinylidine and it is also possible to have several divalent carbons in a single molecule for example if you see this molecule you can find total one two three four five six carbenes so in a molecule you can observe several divalent carbenes in a single molecule that means this molecule contains six divalent carbons so this can call as hexa carbene hexa carbene so these carbenes have a good importance a lot of importance in synthetic organic chemistry so to know about the generation of these carbenes and their reactivity in synthetic organic chemistry let us know about the history of these carbenes so the history is in 1839 the first attempts to prepare these carbenes in the literature as methylene so the first attempt is for preparation of methylene by dehydrating methanol so methanol the dehydrating methanol using phosphorus pentoxide to get this methylene methylene by a scientist called Dumas so Dumas in 1839 his first attempts made to prepare this methylene from the dehydration of this methanol using phosphorus pentoxide later in 1861 the scientist called Bitlerow Bitlerow he also observed the intermediate methylene which is a carbene when he is preparing the ethylene by the reaction of methyl iodide with the copper so when he is preparing ethylene from methyl iodide in presence of copper he observed the intermediate methylene which is a carbene in 1861 next in 1862 scientist called Guther Guther he established that the dichloromethylene so as we discussed earlier this is the dichloromethylene CCL2 can be produced by the basic hydrolysis of chloroform so chloroform when you treat with the basic hydrolysis that means if you treat this with alcoholic KOH under thermal condition you can observe this dichloromethylene so then the modern work in the field of methylene began around 1910 1910 the investigations of <coughs> scientist called Stodinger Stodinger on the decomposition of diazo compounds so the decomposition of diazo compounds under thermal condition or photochemical condition which also produces the carbenes but so far the overall development has been occurred until 1910 but after 1950s only the importance of this carbenes began and they, these carbenes introduced into synthetic organic chemistry by the scientist called Doring. So his studies made the introduction of these carbenes into synthetic organic chemistry to utilize widely in preparation of different products. So that is what the history about carbenes. So once we know the history, let us go to the generation of carbons. So how to generate this?
carbenes. So there are different methods we have to generate these carbenes where in all methods there is a loss of small and stable molecules from the precursors which generally produce the carbenes. For example, we can generate these carbenes from diazo compounds. From diazo compounds. Diazo compounds easily decompose either in thermal condition or photochemical condition which produces generally carbenes. For example, this is a diazo compound under thermal condition or photochemical condition which produces the carbene. The simple <coughs> precursor is diazomethane diazomethane the structure of this diazomethane can be written as like this so the decomposition under photochemical or thermal condition which produces the, the simple simplest carbene that is methylene so but practically the diazomethane <coughs> diazomethane utilization is explosive generally these are explosive this dialkyl diazo compounds generally they are explosive practically so that the stable diazo compounds can be used used for the production of these carbenes so what are the stable diazo compounds they are diazo carbonyl diazo carbonyl compounds are the stable stable diazo compounds which are non-explosive and are frequently used for the preparation of azyl carbenes for example we can prepare this azyl that means diazo carbonyl compounds from acid halides by treating with the diazomethane CH2N2 which produces And then the excess of diazomethane produce alpha diazo ketone alpha diazo ketone so the thermal or photochemical decomposition of this alpha diazo ketone which produces azyl carbene azyl carbene so the carbene which is attached to Azyl group. So that is the reason this is azyl carbene. So general utilization of this dialkyl, dialkyl diazo, sorry, this diazo alkenes under thermal photochemical condition also produce this carbenes. But only thing is they are due to their explosive nature, the utilization of this precursor practically not uh, recommendable. So that is the reason the most stable non-explosive diazo carbonyl compounds can be used for the synthesis or uh, generating these carbenes in synthetic organic chemistry so in second method we can also generate these carbenes from tosyl hydrazones tosyl hydrogens so how to prepare this tosyl hydrogens so you can prepare this tosyl hydrogens from carbonyl compounds this carbonyl compounds treat with the tosyl hydrazine under base conditions which produces tosyl Hydrogens. Hydrogens. This tosyl hydrogen in presence of base which abstract the proton from here produces nitrogen anion. Since this tosyl group is good living group under thermal condition. Under thermal condition, the loss of the loss of this tosyl group
let me see you by azo stable by azo compound which can have a resonating structure after delocalization of these electrons which gets a good leaving group that is nitrogen so the loss of this nitrogen under thermal condition which produces carbene so this is the better method this is also one of the methods for the production of the generating this carbenes from tosyl hydrazones so tosyl hydrazones upon treatment with the base and followed by the loss of tosyl group which produces a stable diazo compound stable diazo compound under thermal condition or thermal decomposition of this diazo compound produces this carbene in another method we can also generate this carbenes from ketenes from ketenes it is so ketene is a molecule which is having both functional groups that is in as well as own ketone so ketone as well as in so this ketene ketone is attached to alkene so that is why this is ketene so the thermal or photochemical decomposition of this ketenes also generates the carbenes which are neutral electrophiles the loss of carbon monoxide produces our required carbenes so this is also one of the useful method for the generating these carbenes this reaction is not widely used since this ketenes are not readily available precursors and tend to polymerize under the reaction conditions so that is the reason generally we won't use this particular precursor that is ketene so the availability of ketenes are rare so that is the reason this method may not be used widely and we can also generate carbenes from halides from halides halides are intermediates they are vicinal ionic intermediates that means that molecule has both charges on adjacent carbons that means this carbenes may be obtained from phosphorus sulfur or nitrogen halides on heating or photochemical condition for example let us take a sulfur halide where the sulfur directly attached to carbon so this carbon is having negative charge and sulfur has positive charge so this is a sulfur halide where it has a vicinal ionic intermediates vicinal ionic intermediates and these two charges are present on adjacent atoms so upon thermal or photochemical condition photochemical conditions so generally this reaction gives you carbene carbene by the loss of dimethyl sulfide dimethyl sulfide so this is one of the methods to generate carbenes coming to the another method to generate this carbenes is we can also generate this carbenes from small ring compounds especially three membered compounds so since these three membered compounds are highly strained molecules so that this can also produce carbenes upon heating or irradiation conditions so for example let us take uh, a three member ring that is oxirane or epoxide epoxide so <clears throat> this three member ring which are having high ground state energy because of the angle strain will often decompose under photochemical condition or thermal condition and produce the carbene 
what is the carbon so this is also one of the important method for the generation of carbon so this method is very important method for the production of this carbons now so you can take another example like which is a cyclopropane derivative this cyclopropane derivative under irradiation condition which produces dichloromethylene which is a carbene followed by styrene as a another product so in this way you can generate carbenes from small ring or three membered compounds coming to the another method to generate this carbenes is from geminal dihalides and trihalides so we can generate this carbenes from gem dihalides or trihalides so gem geminal means the atoms that both halides or three halides are present on the same carbon but this gem dihalides and gem trihalides having at least one alpha hydrogen give carbene by alpha elimination or 1-1 elimination reaction in presence of strong base so that means this geminal dihalogen should have should have at least one alpha hydrogen alpha hydrogen so this if you treat with the base generally it produce carbenes for example if you take chloroform this chloroform upon treatment with the base generally it abstract the proton from this chloroform and use the carbenia and this carbenium upon loss of this chloride which gives you carbene so dichloromethane so this is a 1-1 elimination reaction or alpha elimination reaction that means for example if you have chloroform So base when it abstract the proton, this bonded electrons are shift on to this carbon and the loss of this chlorine takes place. That means the alpha elimination or 1-1 elimination. So there are dehydrohalogenation takes place within the molecule and produces carbene. So the ease of this elimination generally depends upon the leaving power of the halo group present in the substrate. For example, the leaving group order for the halogens is so iodide iodine has higher ability than bromine than chlorine than fluorine that means iodine can leave better than the other halogen atoms for example if you have chloro difluoro methane when you treat with the base the two strong base so generally this base abstract the proton followed by the loss of or elimination of halogen should take place here compared to fluorine this chlorine has the higher ability to eliminate or can act as a good leaving group so that the loss of cl group will give you a difluoro difluoromethylene difluoromethylene so this is the way you can generate the carbenes generate the carbenes from geminal dihalides or geminal trihalides so generally this reaction these reactions are carried out in presence of organic solvents using a strong base so mainly the sodium salts are potassium salts of tertiary butyl alcohol that means so like tertiary butyl tertiary potassium tertiary butyl oxide but you can also use the phase transfer catalyst to get the same carbenes from the geminal trihalides or geminal dihalides here the very important point is this alpha elimination of this geminal dihalides or geminal trihalides always always produce the singlet carbene this is very important point so alpha elimination of this geminal dihalides are geminal trihalides always produce the 
singlet uh, bin for example if you have trihalo methane if you treat with the base what happens base abstract the proton from this methylene and produces trihalo carbenium followed by the loss of one of the halide which produces the carbene that too especially it is singlet carbon singlet carbon so the stability of this singlet carbon for this dihalo carbenes we will discuss later so dihalo carbenes are always singlet carbenes after successful generation of carbenes let us move to the discussion of types of carbenes so depends on the structure electronic structure of these carbenes so these carbenes are generally two types that is one is singlet carbene and one more is triplet carbene so generally the singlet carbene the both electrons are paired in the case of triplet carbene is both electrons are in parallel position so let us discuss about the singlet and the triplet carbenes for example let us start with the singlet car carbene so the central atom in this carbene is carbon so generally this carbene this carbon electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p2 so in ground state so the valence electrons are 2s there are 2 and in 2p there are 2 one is in 2px and one more is in 2py and one more is 2pz so now this carbon undergoes sp2 hybridization in this valence orbital see here the one s orbital and two p orbitals undergo sp2 hybridization and gives you three sp2 three sp2 hybrid orbitals and the one vacant orbital one vacant p orbital vacant p orbital and one of the two sp2 sp2 hybridized orbital has two electrons and the other two sp2 hybridized orbitals have the single electrons and these electrons are paired with the two hydrogens two hydrogens and they form bond with the two hydrogens so in this singlet carbene if you observe there is one sp2 hybridized orbital having two electrons which are paired which are paired so the spin of this two electrons is zero so the spin multiplicity is one so that is the reason this is called singlet so this singlet carbene is sp2 hybridized and it is having a bent structure <coughs> this is having a bent structure whereas come to the triplet the carbon in its ground state it has 1s2 2s2 2px1 2py1 and this is the triplet state you can observe in excited state so this is ground state once it goes to the excited state one of the electrons in the 2s orbital get excited to one of the vacant p orbital so that this 2s1 and in excited state you can observe 2px1 2py1 and 2pz1 
so now this triplet uh, bin undergoes sp2 hybridization so this also get 3 sp2 hybridized orbitals and 3 sp2 hybridized orbitals have each electron in each orbital and one of the p orbital has one more electron and two electrons in sp2 hybridized orbitals can have or can form a bond with the two hydrogens and if you observe one of the sp2 hybridized orbital has one electron and one of the p orbital so p orbital also has one electron so these non bonded electrons are present in parallel position parallel position so the spin of these electrons is 1 so the spin multiplicity if you add this 1 into this rule 2s plus 1 formula you will get 3 so that right, this is called triplet carbines triplet carbines so this triplet carbine is undergoing sp2 hybridization and also it has bent structure bent structure so there are triplet carbines which are also having which are also undergo sp hybridization and linear molecules so for example if you take triplet carbene so in excited state the carbon has 1s2 2s1 2px1 2py1 2pz1 so this carbon in excited state undergo sp hybridization and get a linear structure so we have sp hybridized orbital having two electrons and there are another p orbitals which are having electrons each electron in each orbital and this sp2 hybridized orbitals and forms a bond with the hydrogen two hydrogens and form two bonds and uh, there are two electrons present in two different orbitals which are in parallel so that they also have a spin one and a spin multiplicity is three so that they are also called as triplet carbines so triplet carbines can have sp2 hybridization and a bent structure and triplet carbene can also undergo sp hybridization and can have linear structure okay so this is all about singlet and triplet carbenes so among these two singlet and triplet carbenes so the triplet carbenes are having two electrons in two uh, different orbitals so they are unpaired electrons so if you use esr spectrum esr spectrum electron resonance electron spin resonance uh, spectrum is generally useful for the identification of free radicals or unpaired electrons in our molecules so among this singlet and triplet carbines if you take singlet and triplet carbines so generally we can identify this triplet carbines using esr spectrum whereas you can't identify the singlet carbines using esr spectrum because singlet carbine the two electrons are paired Whereas in the case of triplet carbon, the two electrons are parallel to each other. So that is the reason you can identify using ESR spectrum. And uh, moreover, if you find the stability of these two triplet and uh, singlet, so triplet always get the stability over the singlet. Remember triplet has more stability than the singlet because the presence of these two electrons in two different orbitals can minimize the electron repulsions whereas the singlet carbines are less stable because the presence of two electrons in the same orbital make more electronic repulsions in the molecules so that is the reason that is the reason singlet is less stable than triplet but the stability always inversely proportional to reactivity so the reactivity of the singlet is 
more than the triplet because singlet is less stable so that's the reason the singlet is higher reactive than the triplet so finally we have two different type of carbenes that is singlet carbenes and triplet carbenes so that means the carbenes which can identify by using esr spectrum are triplet and which are not which cannot identify by the esr spectrum are singlet so that means those who have two unpaired electron and whose bond angles are 132 150 degrees 150 degrees and this molecule should have two parallel electrons or two unpaired electrons so they are called triplet carbenes which are observed by esr examples for this triplet carbenes are generally methylene so simplest carbon methylene is the best example for the triplet carbene and phenyl carbene and alkyl carbene and then diphenyl carbene are the best examples for the triplet carbenes whereas the carbenes which are not observed by ESR spectrum and whose bond angles are 100 to 110 degrees 110 degrees are generally called singlet carbenes singlet carbenes so the best examples are dihalo carbenes so dihalo carbenes are best example and monohalo carbene are dimethoxy dimethoxy carbene and uh, the other molecule So this is NHC, N heterocyclic carbenes are also best examples for singlet carbenes. So in this case, the stability that means these carbenes are stable in singlet, singlet form, and in this case, these carbenes that means methylene, phenyl methylene, okay, alkyl methylene or diphenyl carbenes, these are all they are stable in triplet condition. So that is why these are all triplet carbenes. So, so they are stable in triplet condition. Whereas this dihalo carbenes, okay, monohalo carbenes or dimethoxy or NHC in heterocyclic carbenes are generally they are stable in singlet singlet situation. So that is the reason these are all considered as singlet carbenes. So these are the <coughs> types of carbenes generally exist so once we know the types of carbenes so let us move to the stability of this carbenes stability of carbenes so as i mentioned triplet carbenes are more stable than the singlet carbenes the reason behind this is the triplet in the triplet carbene so the two electrons non-bonded electrons are present in different orbitals so the repulsion between these two electrons are less so that this triplet carbene so generally having 32 to 42 kilojoule per mole which is more stable and which is having less energy more stable than the singlet carbon why singlet carbons are less stable because the two electrons, the two non-bonded electrons present in the same sp2 hybridized orbital, so due to uh, more repulsion, due to more repulsion in this, so the singlet carbenes are less stable and high reactive than the triplet carbene. But this stability criteria is not observed always. So, for example, the simplest carbene that is methylene. So always it is stable in triplet state as I mentioned earlier. But whereas 
if you have dichloromethylene so when you have dichloromethylene this dichlorocarbene generally always stable in singlet case so singlet so singlet dichlorocarbene is always stable when the triplet so what is the reason behind the this so that means i told you that means as we mentioned the triplet is always stable but whereas here in this case the singlet is more stable in which case that is dichlorocarbene why so always this dihalocarbenes are in stable in singlet state so why because if you consider the structure of this carbenes this of this carbon connected to or bonded to two chlorine atoms so a p atomic orbital of x that means halo halogen with a lone pair of electrons can overlap can overlap literally with the empty p orbital of the singlet carbene thereby it stabilizes the singlet state so in singlet state already we know that in singlet state there are two electrons present there are two non bonded electrons present in one of the sp2 hybridized orbital and one vacant p orbital we have observed vacant p orbital because of this vacant p orbital this carbenes are generally acts as electrophiles so they are ready to accept the electrons from others so the filled p orbitals of this halogen orbitals generally overlap with the empty vacant or vacant p orbitals of the the carbene present in this singlet carbene so that it stabilizes this carbene by donating this electrons or by uh, yeah overlapping of this orbitals so such kind of stabilization is not possible in triplet state whose p or p atomic orbitals are not empty whereas suppose if you consider this is triplet so in triplet state already there are two electrons present in two different orbitals so such kind of overlapping and such kind of stabilization is not possible because there is no vacant orbital in the triplet state but in the singlet state you have a vacant orbital so that the overlapping of this uh, two halogens can stabilize this singlet carbene for example if you have a dihalocarbene so this dihalocarbene can form different resonance structures different resonance structures after the overlapping with this carbon vacant p orbitals among this dihalo carbenes so the stability order you can have with the different dihalo that is different halo groups that is generally difluorocarbenes are more stable than the dichlorocarbenes which are more stable than the dibromo carbenes so what is the reason behind this so this carbon that is this difluorocarbene this carbon p orbitals and fluorine p orbitals are about having same size so that they are having more efficiency in overlapping so that is the reason this cf2 that is difluorocarbene is more stable than the dichlorocarbene because this carbon p orbital p orbitals and fluorine p orbitals are having same size okay that is the reason the overlapping efficiency is high in this range in this so that is uh, in this difluorocarbene which makes it more stable not only in this case dihalo case there are other reasons we can have the extra stability attaining by this singlet state or singlet carbenes so what are the other 
reasons is for example if you have so it is a carbyl that is cyclo hepta tri amylide tri amylide that means it is a elide so it is a carbyl where it is singlet carbyl so that is the reason where accommodating two electrons in single orbital and which is having a vacant p orbital vacant p orbital so here the vacant p orbital can overlap with the rest of the pi system pi system in this molecule so that there is a delocalization of this pi electrons take place so this delocalization also one reason to get the stability of this singlet carbons so they are highly stable in this case so earlier we have discussed an example that is in hcc in heterocyclic carbon cyclic carbene where here the carbene is an electrophile electrophilic but due to presence of two donor atoms adjacent to it can stabilize the electrophilicity of this carbene so that means these electrons can donate and stabilize this singlet carbene so this molecule that is this carbene is always stable in singlet state because of the stabilization of this neighboring donor atoms so not only this electronic factors so this kind of delocalization or the presence of donor atoms adsent to this carbenes are adsent to the vacant orbital vacant p orbital of carbon in the carbene also makes this carbene in that is carbene in stable stable at singlet state so in next video we are continuing the discussion of the carbenes that means the nature of carbenes and the carbenes synthetic applications in synthetic organic chemistry thank you